Hi, before we dig into chapters, let's start with the introduction and setting context of this course. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Rahul Jha. I am an IT professional, blogger, and a research scholar. I will be your host for this course. I write articles, tips, tutorials, and also upload videos on dotnetconcept.com. You can just go through this website and get relevant information regarding upcoming technologies. You can also connect with me on my Facebook page, LinkedIn profile, Twitter handle, and also on YouTube channel. I will share link in later videos. So let's start with the course. So in this course, uh, this course is mainly focused for beginner and intermediate level of student. So in this course, you can learn a basic concept of Pythons, then working with variable and data types, printing output, implementing condition using if else statement, then looping using for and while loop. We will also perform some arithmetic operations and later we will see creating and calling methods in Python program. We will also learn uh, working with arrays and list, perform some different operation on list. Then uh, we will learn how to work with ranges, then tuple, set, and dictionaries. We will see how to work with packages in Python, how we can import packages, and how we call the packages, I mean, call the methods of that package. Then we will also create uh, custom packages. Then in later part, we will work with uh, graphs as well and many more things i mean this is not the only thing we will learn uh, many more things in this uh, course uh, for this course we are using google collab for practicing python programs so we will introduce google collab as well so i think we are good to go here so let's start in this video you will learn about google collab like uh, what is Google Collab and uh, why we use Google Collab? How this came into this picture? So let's see uh, what is Google Collab. Google Collab or Google Collaboratory is a research project created by Google, which uh, is used to help enthusiasts and researchers to create machine learning based projects. So this provides an environment which needs no setup and things to run uh, your Python programs. So you can say that this is a cloud based environment which is uh, used by many researchers and uh, enthusiasts to learn Python or to learn machine learning um, kind of things. Google Collab has many features like it has uh, it supports CPU as well as uh, GPU, which can be used for complex classification and manipulation. I mean, for complex training of your uh, uh, machine learning based uh, uh, algorithms. So, uh, it also provides uh, inbuilt uh, libraries of Python. So, you need not to install any Python libraries and uh, it's a cloud-based environment so you can use it uh, anywhere i mean you just create your project here and you can just uh, use anywhere with the help of your uh, uh, google account and uh, it is very fast as it has i mean a good amount of ram then it provide uh, you GP gpu facilities uh, which can be used for I mean complex programming and all things. So overall, you can say that uh, Google Collab is the best platform that can be used 
for uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and also to learn Python. So in this course, we are going to use uh, Google Colab for all the practical sessions then uh, in Python. So uh, I think let's uh, start with it. So let's open browser and let me uh, write Google. Then uh, you should be uh, logging with your Google account. So as you can see here that I have already logged in with it. So now search uh, Google Colab. And here you can see the first link is uh, collab.research.google.com. So let's open it. So here you can see that we uh, Google Colab is open. Okay, and now we have uh, uh, already uh, we have created one um, Python notebook. So let's open it. So you can create uh, any. I mean. Uh, your own python notebook from here i mean i'm just using it and also i want to just highlight it that uh, you can have you have two options like new python 3 notebook and python 2 notebook so i am using python 3 notebook here okay so i opened a uh, new uh, notebook so let me rename this first of all. Uh, let me write uh, practice Python. Okay. Now you can see here that uh, we have uh, practice Python notebook. You can also see here like there is an option to connect and we will tell you about about this in uh, next session so here we have few options then we have code then we have text so uh, we will all uh, talk about this in next session so i think uh, i think we are good to go here and thank you for this in this video we will learn about uh, variables and data type so in last video you see saw that how google collab uh, works like how we can set up google collab and we created a, a practice python notepad notebook that is here so we have different options like connect and we also saw that like we have code then we have text so in this video we will just uh, do a walkthrough of these things okay so uh, uh, let me add a code first okay we can add a code or you can add a text as well so if you want to add a text then you can add it so or uh, you can add code as well I mean, so let me so this uh, let's add uh, uh, basic or uh, uh, variables and uh, data types. Data types. Uh, data types. Okay. So here is this, and you can just shift it. Above. So now we have one section. So now we created one section that is for uh, variable and data type now i can write here code let me add some code uh, you can connect your uh, environment from here just click to connect or you can just uh, when i will write code and execute this code so uh, this environment will be connected automatically so automatically disk will be assigned automatically RAM will be assigned to it and everything so let me just write a variable name that is name and add a value let's suppose uh, Rahul uh, in Python as we program in JavaScript so we need not to 
just assign a variable name variable uh, data type of variable it will automatically assign uh, get the type of it uh, let's suppose uh, here i have written name is equal to rahul so it will automatically take a uh, uh, data type as a string so now let's run this command so to uh, you can see here that uh, there are two ways to just run the code either you can just press a shortcut that is control plus enter or you can click this uh, button as well so in shortcut also we have two shortcuts one is control plus enter that will run this cell particular cell and one we have shift plus enter that will run this cell and it will add one more uh, cell for this i mean to write code you can also add code from here that is control plus m plus b so this is also a shortcut so now let me run the code just clicking on it here so once i click here you just notice this section it will start uh, initializing the environment okay so let's click here so as nice. you can see the allocating then uh, connecting then it will come initializing and now it is connected so now you can see here we have ram and disk okay, and status is okay so here you can see that we have total 12.72 uh, gb of ram and out of which we have 0 0.79 gb and also we have disk that is 1.7.77 gb and out of which i mean 28 gb disk is utilized i mean because uh, google collab use uh, has some inbuilt uh, libraries for python so that we'll see in later chapters so that consume your disk okay so uh, now you can see that uh, this code has been executed but nothing is displayed here okay so now let me add code from here or let me write control m plus b okay so here you can see that new cell added so let me just print the value print and name now i am pressing control plus enter so let me press control plus enter and you can see that it is showing some i mean intelligence like about this uh, method like print print the value to a stream or to sys.std out by default and these kind of things so let's not waste time just press control plus enter here and you can see you can see the output that is rahul is printed here now let me just show you the type of this variable type of name i mean coding is very easy in python so i'm just writing type here so now i'm shifting i mean i'm using uh, uh, key like shift plus enter so it will execute this command and add a new value new row now you can see here the type is a string okay now now let me add one more variable or let's just replace this let's say name is equal to one okay uh, let me write first print uh, name then type of name so what this will do we, we know that name is of string type and it has value rahul now when i will execute this command this code cell so now name will have value as one then it will print name and it will show the type as integer so here you can see the output that is name is equal to one then we have type is as integer so let let's try one more time let's add one more row here and now let's change the value to 1.5 okay now let me just scroll down okay and let's run it and see the type should be float okay 
so name is equal to 1.5 so it printed the value of name that is 1.5 and it is showing the type as float so i think we are pretty much uh, clear here like how we can define your variable and how data type is assigned to the variable name okay so i think we are good for now um thank you this section we will learn about more basic commands in python so in last uh, chap uh, lesson you learn about uh, variables so let's uh, see few more commands and try to understand this environment okay so let me add a cell first and add a command ls so plus as you all know that uh, this will do a listing i mean it will show a current uh, folder folder so let me just run this and okay if you can see the output here we are in sample data folder so ls basically it will display your current folder in which you are right now okay now let's see like from where where this sample underscore data folder is so here you can see that we have a table of content code snippet and files so if you'll see in table of content you have sections in code snippet we have different codes i mean these are the code snippet that you can add to your python programming so here you can see the list of code is here so we will uh, see uh, in later videos or maybe this is out of our scope right now but as for an overview uh, this will add a code snippet to your program and here is the third tab that has your sample data so here you can see the that folder sample data is here so let me and below it is also showing the disk space i mean uh, total 79.77 gb available and 28.01 is consumed so let me show you what is inside sample data folder okay so here you can see we have readme.md at ans combi json then we have few csv files uh, these can be used for machine learning trainings so you can see that mnist test dot csv then mnist uh, train underscore small dot csv so these things are provided by so these things are provided by your know, google collab so you can add any data set and you can use in your program so this is also i mean out of scope for right now so let me add a section so this we can test okay so it will create a new section here so let me just uh, just leave it as this and this so now you can see that we have a new section okay so inside this section you, you see that we have uh, code and text so you can add code or you can add text here so let me add code okay so let's write uh, um, anything let's suppose uh, i is equal to one okay just uh, run this so here you have something i suppose i am writing print uh, i okay so here it is so now everything what you are writing here so this come under this section you can just hide it as well you can see that one cell is hidden and just uh, let's add one more code line here okay uh, let's suppose j equal to 3 okay and now you have two lines so uh, let's hide it 
now you can see there are two cells hidden so basically the purpose was purpose to show this section is that you can create your own sections and you can just uh, categorize your code according to your need like you saw above that there is no section we only added code and your text everything but now here you can see that you have a pre i mean structure a section in a structured way so that you can add as many code here and you can just structure it you can add uh, one more i mean section from here okay so now we can see that we have new section that is new section okay i can add one more section here let's add it mm, okay right now because my cursor was there so that's why it is showing that uh, uh, let me write let's write uh, uh, variable section okay now you can see here that we have a variable section and now five cells hidden now we have two sections so you can just uh, structure your code in sections so that so that it can be more uh, readable like you can see this way so i think uh, we are good here and from next section from next next lecture we will just dig into more code like we'll see if condition and looping and all things i think we are good here oh thank you in this video you will learn uh, just performing some um, arithmetic operation okay so let's create one more section from here so that we can just categorize this let's add a section here and write it uh, arithmetic operation section okay so here we have now new section here okay now let's add code uh, let me define few variables let's say a is equal to 5 b equal to let's say 2 and c equal to a plus b okay now let me print a and print b uh, print c let's say what is the output okay you can see that 5 2 and 7 so this was simple now let me show like print a equal to this now let me show this okay now you can see that when i try to print like a equal to a no, i mean so now it is throwing an error okay so what is the error so most you can call last you can see here must be a string and not integer it is throwing error because this is a string and this is integer this is, it is not able to just print it okay okay so now let's try like this i'll show you the new way of printing it just write a comma here okay now you can see here the print the value to this and here you can see that uh, this is the way and this thing i wanted to highlight like uh, in python you can print more values at a time 
just use uh, separated by comma so here you can see that uh, I have just printed a string value then I separated by comma and then I just printed a integer value so let me see this okay now you can see here a and 5 so a is equal to 5 now this you can also write like this like b b c c here okay will just delete it or just leave it here okay now let's see the output now you can see here that a is 5 b is 2 and c is 7 okay uh, let me just redefine it like this so that everyone every very will look alike i mean like this Oh. so we saw like how we can print more variables in a single uh, in, with a single print command or you can print like this as well now if you print one by one like a is equal to b a is equal to 5 b is equal to 2 and c is equal to 7 so arithmetic operation is very simple in python uh, you can just add one more here i am writing like let's change it okay or just write it I just change the value to uh, okay leave it uh, just click here and now you'll see the value like a is equal to 5 b is equal to 2 and c is equal to 3 okay now let me try multiply okay a b and here it is multiply so this is very simple and you just leave with one more that is divide so these are the basic arithmetic operation okay that you can use in your code okay so i think we are done for this lecture in next lecture we will see more arithmetic operation or things like that so thank you this video we will learn about uh, advanced arithmetic operations in last video you learn doing some basic arithmetic operations like plus minus multiply divide so in this video we will learn about i mean doing some like squ um, square this kind of things so let's add a code here so now just let's add one more code cell okay and let's suppose i'm using uh, p equal to uh, here i want to just calculate the square of a so i for to calculating square i will just write like uh, double star so in previous section i show you like to calculate i mean for multiplication we use single star like we do everywhere in other program programming languages like a star b so it will multiply the values and now we are just trying to calculate a square of this so i will write two star and then i will write here two okay now let's print it 
so let's print b and let's see what is the result of it so it should show like uh, a is equal to 5 so it should show 25 okay this is very easy in python so you can see the output is 25 similarly if you want to calculate let's suppose cube of it so this is also very simple uh, let me just copy it okay and let me create one more code snippet here and now let's do some changes here to calculate cube of a we just need to write here like this a double star and three so it will calculate as 125 here it is so it was very uh, simple okay now let me show you this as well i mean if i write one star like a and multiply by two we should give you 10 okay and if i just write double star so it is calculating square and it will give you 25 similarly here if you just write a star 3 so it should give you 15 and if i write double star 3 then it will calculate the cube of a okay similarly you can find any and of let's suppose i'm writing four then it should calculate 125 uh, 625 so here you go so this is very easy in python okay so so i think we are good to go here i mean we are done with it uh, thank you Before we move ahead, let's do a small recap. So in last videos, you learned how to set up Google Collab. We also learn few basic Python concepts like creating variables, using those variables, then creating sections, then um, we did some basic arithmetic operations like plus minus then we calculated squares uh, cube and we see we saw all these things we learned about how to setting up i mean uh, connecting your google collab and things okay now in this uh, sections in coming sections you will learn about something of uh, conditioning and looping so first of all let me just these things okay oh, all right and let me add new section here okay let me add a code snippet first um, i will add a new section for your Let's add a new section and name it conditioning and looping. Okay, this will be our section and let's add code section. So in this section we will learn about how we can do conditioning like if and else and then later we will learn uh, looping using for loop and while loop let's uh, write a simple code for if condition in python uh, every line is uh, separated by colon if you are adding some condition and things so you need to put colon here and after that you must be concerned about spacing okay so let me create a variable let's say age is equal to 20 and after that i will write a condition like if a is greater than equal to 
18 now let's add a colon here okay so it will go to next line and it will you can see that google collab is automatically considering taking care of your spacing so now print let's say you can vote okay press enter now else print you cannot you cannot vote so it's a simple uh, if condition okay now let's run this and because we have taken age as 20 so it should print which print a output as you can vote see now let's change the age to less than 18 let's say 17 oops 17 and output should produce that you cannot vote let's execute this code and here you go so you can see that you cannot vote so this is pretty simple like adding if and else condition so well, let's see an example of uh, multiple if conditions okay let's add more conditions let's suppose um is is uh, let's say 19 okay now what i want to write is uh, if if is greater than 18 print you are eligible for eligible to what else if okay i am writing else if condition here else if is equal to 17 let's print you are just about to get this benefit else print you have to wait for more time now let's execute this so here you can see that you are eligible for vote now let's check 17 and you are just about to get this benefit if your age is let's say 15 or 16 something below 17 then you should see you have to wait for more time so you can just achieve multiple uh, multi if conditions using elif okay and then everything is same so i think we are good for this lecture and in next lecture we will see uh, looping okay so thank you in this video you will learn about uh, for loop okay one thing i want to highlight that you can see here that all changes saved so google collab automatically saved whatever you are writing so you need not to save your changes i mean you can see that i have used same notebook 
that I used for previous sections and all changes are saving automatically I am not doing anything so this is also a benefit of your Google Go app so now let me add a new section here I mean new code section and there I will demonstrate how to use for loop okay so let me write like uh, for uh, I in now now I want to increment this thing for five times so I will say I in range and five and just to mention that now you can see this better because I have just increased the zoom okay so now let's write it for I in range this colon image previous as we did in if now let's print and i oh i okay now let's see the output so now you can see here that it has printed from 0 to 4 okay now <coughs> Sorry. Now let's uh, assume that you want to print from one, uh, not from zero. Okay. So for that, we need to see that what range has. Okay. So let's uh, let me like this. Now you can see here range can take two values. Okay. One is args and other is keywords. So let me put here like this and here I can write five. Okay, now it should start from one to five. You can see here that it says return an object that produce a sequence of integer from start. Okay inclusive to stop exclusive means that it will include one but it will not include five so if you want to print a value from one to five you have to put range one comma six okay so you can see that range i comma j produces i i plus one i plus two until j minus one okay and if you not if you don't write i so it takes default to zero that we demonstrated in uh, just few minutes ago okay now let me show this to you it should show value from one to four so here you go you can add multiple print as well let me write uh i then let me do some arithmetic operation let's suppose i uh, star star 2 okay so it should print your oh wait something gone wrong here okay now let me do like this Okay. Um, okay. I thought it's something new, but it's not new. We are printing two times, so that's why. First, it is taking one, and then it is doing this. Okay. I thought <laughs> it's all right. Uh, so I think we are good for uh, today. So we saw like how we can implement for. Okay. Next section in next lecture we will see about uh, while loop oh thank you in this video we will learn about uh, implementing while loop okay so in last video you saw, saw like how we implemented for loop and here is this uh, we are working on same notepad i mean 
notebook here you can see for loop here okay now let's add one more code snippet so okay now let's add a while loop here or while loop we need to initiate a variable first and then we will add conditioning so let me write i is equal to let's say zero okay then after that i will write uh, while and then conditioning it's simple like uh, as we do in other languages as well now let's say while less than five and print i okay uh, let's run this oh I didn't sorry I just didn't incremented that okay so I have to increment it as well so let's suppose I is I is equal to this one okay now now let's run it so here you go now you can see that I mean uh, while start from zero and we added condition that if i is less than five then it should print and after that we are incrementing it so you can see here output zero to four okay here i want to highlight one thing that uh, like we do in other languages like in c sharp or java this will not work so if you write syntax like i plus plus it works in java and c uh, c sharp but it will not work in python so let's see it should show you syntax error okay uh, in varied syntax so for that you need to write like i plus equal to and one you can give any value here let's say i plus equal to and two so it will increment by two values so you can see here 0 2 and 4 so i believe that this was easy okay so in next sections we will see more so thank you so before we move ahead let's do a quick recap so so far we learned how to setting up set up google collab then we learn few basic Python concepts like adding variables. Then we learn how to do some arithmetic operations. Then added conditions. Then looping. I mean for loop and while loops. So these were uh, basic Python concepts. So from now onward, we will do some advanced. Uh, concept okay we will learn advanced concepts so before we go ahead let's uh, see how to just reuse your code i mean till now what we have added what whatever we code added this was in a raw format like if we want to reuse i need to just copy it so it was a kind of duplicacy of code so now to overcome that we will see how we can create methods and reuse those method in our upcoming program so let's add a code snippet here let's control m b okay now uh, let me define a method so for defining a method we will use a keyword def def then method name let's say add just add a simple method here and variable let's suppose variable a and b okay now colon and return a plus b okay so this is your method now let's try to just call it let me write three and four here 
and just execute this okay so you should see 7 as output okay you can also just use this method because this is returning so you can assign the value of method to a variable so let's create a variable and try to see it let's create a variable of like sum equal to add and let's say five six okay and now print it print sum so let's show you 11 i guess so i believe we are good so far now let's do a little more like i print i'm writing sum and sum okay so let's see okay now you can see that it is showing sum is equal to 11 so i think we are good here and we saw how to create a method and how we can call this method like this okay and we also saw how to assign the method value or method output to a variable and use that variable to print or I mean, in your other methods and so on you can use this uh, in other methods as well so i think so far we are good here now uh, thank you before we start to advance concept in python uh, i thought to have one more uh, demonstration in last video we saw how to create a method of that has return type okay. so here you can see that in last video we saw like how we created a method and that had a return type so we created an add method and it returned a value now uh, let's create one more method which has no return type i mean what we call as void let's define one more method here this is a simple method i'm just i'm just not doing anything special here and define let's suppose display and now let's copy uh, code uh, let's say for loop or while loop okay so here we have while loop so i'm just copying it here okay and i'm just pasting it to this method as i said before i'm not doing anything special here i'm just demonstrating you how we can create a method which has no return type uh, here as you can see that i created a method display where i'm just writing a simple logic while logic and printed the value here okay so let's call our method and let's call this play here okay i think let's do indentation and execute the code so it should only show the output like we see so earlier it started from zero incremented by with two and it executed till five so zero two and four now you are able to create two kind of methods one has return type and one has no return type i mean wide so so far we are good here and from next section what i think we can we will see how to do a bit we will see a few advanced concept so, thank you okay so so far we learned basic python concept we went through uh, basic arithmetic operations then if else conditions and looping and all things now let's see how we can uh, work with uh, this stand dictionary okay so let's add a code section here so i'm just adding a code section i have already created a section for list and dictionary so I have already explained like how we can create a section in Google Colab. Okay, now I'm just adding a new code section here, and let me add few variables 
let's say name one is equal to uh, Rahul then name two is equal to let's say John okay and now let me create a list for that I am just adding a variable let's say name list okay um, now let's add a uh, list here let's say name list and then I'll create an array type and I'll add these variables here okay so name one and name two now let's see the type first okay then we'll see let's write type then name list okay and also okay just first see the type here so you can see here the type is list okay now let's add one more code block here and let's print it let's print the list print name list so let's execute this code and it will show me rahul and john okay so here you can see that uh, your list has been printed and it is showing two names rahul and john now let me create one more list and which contain different uh, type i mean different type of variables data types for that i will use name one from above and let me create one more variable for let's say uh, contact and let me add 9999 okay uh, let me create one more uh, list let's say employee list and add name one then name two and contact okay so the type should be name okay and employee list and let me print it as well so it should print all the values so print employee list okay so when this code block run so it should show type as list and it should print all the values so let's execute it and here you can see that it has printed Rahul, then John, and the contact 9999. I think so far we are good here. So uh, I will end this video here. Uh, okay. So thank you. In last video, we see how to create a list. So in last video, we created a list. You can see that we created a list and we saw like how to see the types and we've printed value uh, in the list okay so now let's uh, perform some basic operations like getting value from list and things like that okay so let me just add a code block in and i will use same list that i created in last video so let me print uh employee i am taking employee list okay because it has three value so employee list and let's say let me print first one okay so just execute the code and it should print rahul because it is on the first position so here we can see that and it has printed Rahul. You can print, I mean, more values. Like if you want to print uh, more, I mean, uh, items in the list, so you can print that as well. So for that, I can do like this. 
let's say print and then employee list and let me print from first to second okay so what i can do is i can just do like this then i am writing first to two okay so let me execute it and here you can see that it only printed john not uh 999 why because it exclude this one okay so it will include first so it it include first element like it starts from zero so it will take zero one and two so what it is doing it is taking first element okay this one but it is excluding this position i mean what it will take it will two minus one okay so my so upper bound will be two minus one that is one so that's why it printed only john so if you want to print like john and this contact number so you have to write like something like like it will start from one and it will end uh two plus one that is three okay now it should print john and 999 so this we have seen earlier also like in python it takes uh, whenever we talk about indexes so it take upper bound as uh, n minus 1 so it didn't take nth position i mean it take n minus 1 so if i wanted to print second position so i write it 3 so it means 3 minus 1 that is 2 i think we are clear here okay so now let me do more thing or um let me end here let me do end here okay and i will we will perform more action in next section thank you okay so <clears throat> in last video we see how to uh, get the value from list okay and now in this section let's try some modification i mean let's modify the list okay so for that i'm just creating one more code section and let me do one thing let's write employ uh, list okay and uh, first position is equal to uh, let's say kumar okay now just execute it and now let me just print the employee print employee list so what it should do because as we have updated the uh, item in employee list so it should show me updated one okay so ideally it should show rahul then kumar and then the phone number because i have replaced john with kumar so that's why it is showing rahul here then kumar here and 999 here okay so now let me do one more thing let's let me write like this employee list and let me change uh, contact number as well so let's say 9090 okay and print employee list okay so now it should update contact number as well so here you can see that it has updated contact number so just updating this is very easy okay uh, in next section you will see how to copy a list thank you so uh, before we start uh, i just forgot one thing uh, let me so how we can find the length of your list okay i can simply use a uh, len 
method okay this is inbuilt method and you can write employee list then it should show length like here length should be three okay so now let's uh just add one more code list and i want to copy employee list into another list so let's say i am writing here employee list copy is equal to employee list okay now it should copy the items from employee list into employee list copy one thing i i want to highlight here that uh, by default it is uh, uh, i mean uh, shallow copy so if you change the primary list it should reflect in secondary list as well okay so this we will see in some time okay so let me print this first okay let me just write employ uh, list copy here and it should show me like rahul kumar and this okay now what i was talk talking about like let me just modify employ uh, copy now okay so let me write like employee list copy and let me change first item let's say uh, john okay now if you print it so now let's print uh, first employee list then copy so it should show me updated value so this is obvious that it will show updated value here okay here is the updated value now the point is that what i said that it is a shallow copy so now if i print uh employee list so it should also show me the same okay so here you can see that when i change a copy of employee list so it changed the original value so this is an example of uh shallow copy now the point is there is one more concept that is deep copy and which means that when you change any um, child list so it should not reflect in your parent okay and vice versa so how we can do that so you can do it by using uh, by this way okay uh, let me create one more let's say employ list employ list copy copy okay so let me write here like uh, list okay then let me write the uh, let me take uh, employ list and copy here now it will uh, just add a copy i mean it will just copy the items from employ list copy into this list employ list copy copy but this will be a deep copy okay so let me create this first and let me first print print employ list copy copy okay let me print uh employ list copy so it will show me like both the list okay first of all let me show both the list and then we will see okay now you can see here that uh, both the list has same values i mean same items okay now let me just change the value in let's say employ 
list copy copy let's say first item is equal to rahul okay now the thing is that when i do this it should just modify employee list copy copy but but uh, it should not change the value in employee list copy i mean it should not change the parent list okay so let me do it print it again so let me just uh, copy from here okay and let me just paste it uh, let me paste it so i'm just saving some time okay so you now you should see a different list okay now you can see that i have changed the first item from employee list copy copy okay and i changed the value to rahul so as you can see here okay rahul but the original list i mean the parent list that was employee list copy that had john okay so you can see here it had john so this value hadn't changed okay so now you see the both the types like shallow copy and deep copy okay so i think uh, i'm good here so i will end this video thank you so so far we we have seen i mean many concept in list okay so we tried many thing with our list so uh let me do one more thing uh let me try to demonstrate like how we can merge two list okay so here you can see that we have two lists okay so we have employee list copy copy and we have employee list copy so i'm just trying to merge both the list okay so for merging this what i am doing it i am only just uh, just take one more list okay that is uh, let's name it merged merged employee list equal to uh, employee list copy and plus employee list copy copy okay so by doing this what i am trying to do i am just merging both the list i mean employee list copy and plus employee list copy copy okay so it will merge both the list into one new list that is merged employee list so let print it as well okay so must and employee list now let's execute this okay now just, just press control plus enter and now you can see here that employee list copy had three items that was john kumar and the contact number and employee list copy copy it also had three items that is rahul kumar and the contact number okay now your merged employee list has six items okay so you can just check the length as well okay so must employ list so it should show you like six okay so here you can see that the length is six okay so i think i will um we are just good here and you see many things about list so i will end uh, this video here okay thank you so before let's move ahead let's do a quick recap of what we did in last section so in last section we saw how to work with list okay now in this section we will see few more concepts like tuples uh, set 
and dictionary so just let's add a section here for tuple then set and let's say dictionary dictionary section so in this section we will learn about these things okay so now let me add a code block here and let's see one by one okay so first of all see what is tuple so uh, both I mean all these three like tuple set and dictionary are uh, kind of uh, list but has uh, different features like different properties you can say like if you talk about tuple so it is same as list but this is read only I mean we can only assign a value once but we cannot change the value okay so same way if we talk about set so this is also similar to tuple as it also don't allow uh, values again and again so it is also read only but apart from read only it has one more property like this contains unique value as well okay so uh, both tuple and set are more or less similar but just have a little different little difference like set contain unique values and tuple contains tuple may contain unique or non-unique values as well and if you know about other languages so you would know that dictionary is uh, it maintain a dictionary maintain a key value pair where you have a key and for that key there will be a, a value so dictionary is different than this tuple and set so i think uh, we are good here so in next section we will see practical example of tuple sets and dictionary okay thank you now to start the tuple let's uh, create a list first so let me add my list is equal to let's say uh, Rahul and 9999 okay then let's see the type of it my list okay and let's execute the code here and you can see that your type is list now to create a tuple sorry uh, let me add it from here so now to create a tuple let me add another variable let's say my tuple and it's, it's equal to there is a math function called tuple and using this you can convert your list into tuple okay so let's say my list okay now once you convert this into tuple so what will be done like it has a property like uh, you will not be able to change the value so let me see the so the type first so my uh, tuple here okay and the type should be tuple and let's print the value as well like my tuple so it should print the values okay all right let me print let me print list as well my 
my list and you can see so now you can see the difference okay set up a start with you can see the difference let up a start with this bracket and uh, list start with this bracket okay so you can see the difference in both now let me try to just change a value so let's say i want to write like first of all let's print and my tuple let's say zero position okay so it is showing correct and now let me just try to assign a value let me try to write like my tuple zero is equal to john okay now it should not let me add value so here you can see that it is throwing error so it is saying that tuple object doesn't support item assignment so as we stated earlier as well like tuple is read only and you can only assign a value once so now we have a value already assigned so now you cannot change the value so i think we are good here okay thank you so in last section we learned about tuple and we saw how tuple works okay so now in this section we will see about uh, set so let me add uh, one more list let's say i'm just uh, let's say write my list my list new is equal to let me write uh, let me write let's say write rahul then 9999 and 9999 okay so now you'll see that now we i have a list here okay and let's print it as well so my list and new okay now your list has three items but two are duplicate okay and as we stated that uh, set can only have unique values so ideally what it should do like when i create convert this list into set so it should automatically delete the values i mean delete your uh, duplicate values so let me see so that okay for uh, to convert your list into set so let's use a method called let's say my set is equal to there is a method called set and now just add it my list new okay so it will convert a uh, list into uh, set now let me show you the type here set okay so it should show me like this type is set okay now let's print it as well and as we know that it should only print non unique values so it should print like rahul and 9999 okay and as same as tuple we should not be able to just uh, modify the value 
so if I write like my set and zero is equal to John so it should throw me an error so here you can see that I have error like object does not support item assignment so I think uh, we are good here and we know now about tuple and set okay uh, thank you okay so so far we are good and we now know about tuple and set so in this section we will cover about uh, we will see like how we can work on dictionaries and uh, what is dictionary so to create a dictionary we just use uh, curly braces and we will use key and value pair okay so let me add like my dictionary my dix my dictionary let's initialize it so this is uh, we can say like this is a dictionary okay now let's see the type of it my dictionary and it should show me like dictionary okay now let's try to add some value here and my dictionary let's say uh, let's say name and name would be let's say like Rahul then let me add one more key pair like my dictionary then contact equal to 9999 okay so now I created two key value pair okay one is name and one is contact so let's try to print my dictionary it should show me like a relation between uh, like a relation like name is equal to Rahul then contact is equal to uh, 99 like we have in JSON format so you can see here like as we have in JSON format we follow same format in JSON as well so if you are aware about JSON so you have key and there you have value okay now you have key then you have value and this is separated by a colon so now you can see that we have two key value pair one is name is going to Rahul and other is contact is equal to uh, 9999 so now let's try to fetch the value okay like my dictionary then let's say name okay uh, print let's print the value okay and it should show me the value as Rahul. Uh, let's try one more like my dictionary and contact. So it should print me contact value that is 9999. Okay. So here you can see that value has printed so i think we are good here uh, thank you uh, before we move to this section let's do a quick recap like what we did in last sections so in last few sections we saw about basic of patterns then we worked on with list then in large section we 
work with tuple set and dictionary so all you can see here everything is in same uh, Jupyter notebooks so you can see here we have variable section then we have arithmetic operation section okay then we have conditioning looping then we learned like how to define a method then we worked with list and dictionary and after that we sorry we learned about list then last section we learn about tuple set and dictionaries okay now let's create one more section here and just name it as okay oh, let me add a section here not there let's just name it as like in this section we are going to learn about uh, importing packages packages and class now in this section we will learn how to we can create a class and how we can import inbuilt package from python okay so now let's name it as section okay so now let's add code here or uh, or i think we are good for good here and we will cover this in next section thank you in this video we will see like how we can import a uh, package in python so we all know that uh, python is open source and there are tons of packages inbuilt packages and uh, customized packages created by uh, many developers and or by communities so let's uh, try to import a package let's try to import a simple package like uh, we have a math package for mathematical operation so let's try adding that so for that we have a keyword like import then let's see math and let's add an alias so this way we can add a package in python so this will add a, a package math and now we can work with that so this has various method so let's say um just uh, calculating some factorial so let's suppose math dot factorial and let's say five okay so here you can see that factorial of five will be 120 let's calculate one more like factorial let's say uh, simple factorial like of three so it should be six i guess so here you go so like this we have many methods and you can use from package and you can see the package detail on internet as well like uh, particular package what all methods that contains like you can see everything in uh, on internet like in git or other repository so i think i'm done here okay thank you okay so before we start and we create a class let me show you one more thing like if you remember uh, we in last section i mean in um, where we were doing some arithmetic operation 
we saw like many kind of arithmetic operation so now now as we know that we have imported now we know like how to import a, a package so let uh, do one more arithmetic operation like we have a method for square root there if we can calculate a square root of value okay so this thing i left in that section intentionally and wanted to cover when we create a package now we know like how to import package so we can do this uh, though we in last section we saw a few method like we saw how to call factorial so let's call the square root method as well so it should show me two okay so now you are able to calculate a square root of uh, a value as well so now i think let's create a class okay so now just add a code block here and we will create a class so to create a class we have a keyword that is class and let's say my class name is my class okay and let's add a colon here and now define a method so we will use existing method that we demonstrated in while we were showing the how to defining method section so let me just find it here no, it is not so we will take this method let's just copy it and just add it here so let's do some indentation okay so now we have a class okay just execute it so we have created a class now we will create an object of that class let's say object my class equal to my class now i can call this method from my class object so object my class dot add and let's say five and six okay uh, let's execute it and let's execute it as well okay so here you can see that you have a few errors i mean you can you encounter an error so that is add takes two position argument but three were given okay so now you can see here that whenever you have an error you have an option to search internet so you can click here and you can go to internet and search the relative posts okay but here we know like what is the problem so we will simply just add a reference of this class so we add reference using self keyword okay now let's ex execute it again uh, create an object and now just run this so now it should show me like 11 so i think we are good here so in this section we learn like how to create a class we added a method into class then we created an object and finally we call a method okay here is the method we call so i think we are good here um, thank you so i think we have covered a lot of things in this uh, course so you started from uh, google collab you know now what is google collab then we started from various uh, like 
basic concepts like creating variables then doing some arithmetic operation then we saw like how to work with conditions then defining method then we also saw like how to work with list dictionary tuple set and we saw like how to import a package and how to create a class how to create an object and how to call a method of of a class okay so all these things we learned so i think i think we have a uh, basic knowledge of python and we are ready to boost ourselves okay so uh, i will end here and if you like this course so i will request to just add your reviews add comment just share this with your friends and show your love okay so thank you very much Thank you.